So, 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 he calls it, so brings in the, the, the science reporter with the photographer, and they study this problem. <laughs> and it took them a year, not a year to do it, but it took a year to get noticed about how we organized the solar system, and then came the page one story on the New York Times. This was on January 22nd, 2001. Now what should be filling that page that day? Let's think. What happened two days before that? The inauguration of President George W. Okay? You'd think the whole front page would be filled with articles related to the transition of power. Especially since they were still counting dimple chads in Florida. Okay? But no. So here's the New York Times. And I have a mock-up of that very paper right here. Okay? This is it. New York Times. January 22nd, 2001. So yes, on the first day, Bush settles into his retrofitted or refitted Oval Office. Okay, so it's there. I don't have a problem with that. Other way, over here, 37 new cardinals selected by the Pope. Okay, big news, big news. Okay. Um, Iraqi rebuilt weapons factories, U.S. officials say. Okay, interesting to see news before, you know, what's called the truth. I to read it. It's kind of interesting. Turn around, we got uh, new power plants in California because there was brownouts coming through here. We needed that. I guess that's good news right there. But here it is at the bottom. Pluto not a planet? Only in New York. Okay? There it is. Right there. Page fucking one. Page one. We didn't say Pluto wasn't a planet. We just grouped it with its newly found family. That's all we did. So, this, when, when does this hit? This in the morning? This title came out. By that afternoon, my phone couldn't stop ringing. Within four days, I was getting hate mail from third graders. Okay? This created a disturbance in the space-time continuum. <laughs> elementary school curriculum. <laughs> so, my life would never be the same as my file cabinets burgeoned with people choosing sides on this issue. People angry. <laughs> Pissed off is really the right word. I get, I, in, in the Pluto files, I've got some, some letters are transcribed, but others, I have to just scan them in because they're like, Seven years old, seven year old kid, crayon scrawl notices. Dear Dr. Titan, put Pluto back. It's my favorite planet. Here's what it looks like. And he drew a picture of it. In case I didn't know what it looked like. Right? Another one says, it right back soon, but not in cursive. I don't know how to read cursive. Yet. So cute. Too cute. Completely too cute. So. So this went on for years, for years. People choosing up sides. And I try to understand why do Americans care so much? Because in Europe they don't care. You say Pluto, Pluto may be demoted. They say, oh, but of course, you know, go past the line, fine, what else do you do? No, 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 nobody's getting bent out of shape. Nobody's being, nobody has emotional disruption by this information. So I, I thought about this. I had, I, so, well, 1930, Pluto was discovered. What else happened in 1930? What else happened in 1930? Of course, that's the year that Disney first sketched the dog. The dog. Pluto, the dog, has the same tenure in the hearts and minds of Americans as does the cosmic object. They are the same age. Plus, an American discovered Pluto. You combine all this, this is a recipe for like emotional attachments. Plus, when do you first learn about the planets? It's in early elementary school. And if you're a normal kid, you'd be like watching cartoons too, right? So here you are there, and you're not learning about the Roman mythology that gave you that, you get that's later, like in sixth grade, seventh grade. They're just names, Mercury, 
First time you hear it. Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto! <laughs> and so BAM! There it is. There's the emotional attachment. Never to be extricated again. <laughs> Hearts in your minds. And so, I'm convinced that's the reason. I, I have no other accounting for it. At all. And so, because it's diminutive. There are seven moons in the solar system bigger than Pluto. Did you know this? I don't know if you knew that. Okay? And including Earth's moon. By the way, I came through here. It's like my second time in this room. I came here two years ago uh, when I had my previous book came out. And I hadn't planned on going there, but I was asked about Pluto by the audience. And I was giving sort of an update of what was going on at the time. But what I could not have said was, since our decision to reorganize Pluto, it was the first public institution to take that stand. The professional community realized that something has to be done about Pluto. It's too different from the rest of the objects we traditionally call planets to lay quiet while these discoveries are going on. So they set up a planet naming committee to look into the problem. Top people looking into the problem. So they proposed that Pluto still be called a planet and that a planet just simply be anything that's round. <laughs> That pretty much will get you Pluto. Get Pluto out of that one. Other folks said, uh -uh. no, no, we don't play that. We gotta, if you just round, then what, do you, what good is that? Uh, I have other objections as well, but it started out where we gotta do a little better than just this round. So, two extra criteria were added to justify planet status. Mind you, we never redefined the word planet. We just didn't care to use the word at all. But now they're trying to come up with a new definition of the word planet. So, is you, are you round? Put a check in Pluto's box. Next, are you the predominant member in orbit around the sun? So that's code for, are you somebody's moon? Okay? <laughs> Pluto is not somebody's moon. Pluto has a moon. Sharon, it's called. Okay? So Pluto goes around. Sharon, C H A R O N. And then, it's not just because, like, somebody's wife was named Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> um, not that you ask, but since we're here together, uh, planets are named after Roman gods. Planet moons are named after Greek characters in the life of the Greek counterpart to that Roman god. Huh. Got that? Okay, so for example, Jupiter, one of Jupiter's moons is Ganymede. Ganymede is the manservant of Zeus, and Zeus is the counterpart to Jupiter. So this is an homage to the Greek and Roman um, history of the subject. There is one, uh, so Sharon is the name of the ferry boat driver to take your unfortunate soul across the river into Hades. <laughs> Yeah, see, we got, we got that together. <laughs> There's one planet that is an exception to this. That's the planet Uranus. Its moons are named after assorted characters in Shakespearean literature. Shakespeare. Someone said, why? Thank you. <laughs> I said that, I said, I wonder if anyone's going to just say why. Or are you just going to just accept it as, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, man. You said why. <laughs> uh, Uranus was the very first planet ever discovered. Nobody had discovered a planet before. It was discovered by William Herschel of the uh, United Kingdom, England. Okay? William Herschel discovers a planet. If you never discovered a planet before, there's no tradition of how to name them. These are just they've been named from antiquity. So he said, I discovered a planet, I'm going to name it. So he did what any good scientist would do. He named it after his principal funder, yeah. which was King George. So for about 50 years, if you looked at the enumeration of planets in textbooks, it was Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and George. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I, I, I would say, each, I, there's something wrong with a planet named George. Right? I don't know about you, but I don't want a planet named George. 